makes a way when there ain't no way. Amen. That is our Savior, exalted today. Well, on that note, let's turn to Luke and chapter 2. Luke and chapter 2. This is a Advent or Christmas passage. And I tend to be somewhat of a traditionalist when it comes to preaching. Uh, if there's a season uh, that is noted, I often bring a sermon along that line. And so uh, some of our sermons over these four weeks will certainly be focused upon uh, the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Luke chapter 2 and verse 8 and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. I don't know if any of you ever attended or were part of a children's Christmas pageant for Christmas. I can remember as a boy being in those pageants as a shepherd. And I always had to wear my bathrobe. <laughs> it kind of embarrassed me. But uh, the good thing was I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> Verse 9, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Down to verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Praise God. When Jesus was born, the angels praised God. I love the change that takes place in the shepherds. They at first were full of fear. After they heard the message of the angels and saw the baby Jesus, his mother and Joseph, they were praising God too. Last week, we celebrated, or many did, Thanksgiving. And today, I want to mention praise. Interestingly, they are almost twins when it comes to the Word of God. Kind of like I like to compare it to a coin that has heads or tails, but it's the same coin. And that's how praise and thanksgiving are together. For example, if you remember last week, our sermon came from a man who was thankful for being healed from leprosy. And in Luke chapter 17, the Bible says, Jesus told he and nine others to go to the priests, and on the way they were healed of their leprosy. He turned around, and the Bible says he came back praising God with a loud voice and falling at the feet of Jesus and giving thanks. So we see praise and thanks together. You go over to 2 Chronicles in chapter five. After Solomon, that great wise king, had built the beautiful temple there in Jerusalem, the Bible says that he gathered the trumpeters and the singers. And in unison, in 2 Chronicles chapter five, they sang together. And they played together in unison with thanksgiving and praise. Again, they are together. The famous psalm, Psalm 100 in verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And so we find they are connected. However, as I studied on this this week, I learned as well that there is a subtle difference between thanksgiving and praise. And it might be put in this way. Thanksgiving is what we are thankful for. 
Praise is who we are thankful to. Thanksgiving is for all the benefits. Praise is focused on the benefactor. I like also in the psalm where it says, for he is good. And they sang this in 2 Chronicles 5. Here was their psalm that they trumpeted and sang together. For he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. So there was a focus on God. He is good. There was a focus on his goodness. His steadfast love endures forever. How do we know that? The blessings that he's given to us. And so thanksgiving is what he's done for us or others. Praise is who he is. These angels praised God. The shepherds praised God. Now, as we have talked about in time past, and I remind you this morning, there are several words in the Hebrew of the Old Testament and in the Greek of the New Testament, the original language they were written in, that would mean our word praise. For example, in the Hebrew of the Old Testament, there is the word halal. And that's really the idea of bragging or boasting on. Uh, you know, it's like a grandparent. And they get an opportunity to tell about their grandkids. <laughs> and boy, do they love it. We have a few folks like that right around this church. I mean, boy, you ask them about your, their grandkids, you are in for a story or two. Because they love to tell about it. I understand that. I'm a grand, I'm a grandfather. I, can't, I haven't arrived yet where I'm, I can't wait for you to meet my dad because he has so many interesting aspects to his life. But he always tells me, he said, man, I love my grandkids so much. I wish I'd have had them first. And uh, <laughs> I think about that, and I'm not sure. I mean, I love my grandkids, but I, you know, I love my kids, too. But, but you get the idea. And, you know, it's the idea of bragging or boasting or saying how wonderful. That's the idea of home. And then there's the word yada. And yada is the idea that connects thankfulness and even a lifting of hands. I saw a few thankful folks out here this morning when the ministry was going on and hands were being raised. You, in a sense, were yada me. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. But you were praising God is what you were doing by the expressed hand. And it's really the idea of a little child. And, you know, I remember one time uh, taking my grandson to see his dad, my oldest son. And, uh, and when my little, the little grandson saw his dad, my son, he raised his arms toward him. He was so happy to see his father. And I thought, you know, that's what praise is. That's yada. And then there is a word, and it's shabak. And that's the idea of shout. I mean, the Bible says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. And so, not every time and not all the time, but once in a while, just, whoa, whoa, man, what's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm praising God. <laughs> and then there's the word, to live. And it's in the scriptures like 300 times. And it's all about singing to the Lord. Why do we sing so much? Because that's the way the Bible says we express our praise to the Lord. In fact, some have made the distinction between a psalm, a hymn, and a spiritual song out of the book of Colossians. A psalm is singing scripture. A spiritual song is something about our spiritual experience. A hymn is something where we just talk about God. Something that honors and glorifies God. Praising God. And then there is uh, Zamar. And Zamar is the idea of using this, you know, strumming, stringing, playing instruments in praise to the Lord. I mean, all kinds of ways to praise the Lord. And then when you come to the New Testament in the Greek, there's some basic words. The word that the angels do, praising God, and then the shepherds coming and praising God, that is the word anos. And it's, again, the idea of bragging. It is the idea of boasting. It is the idea of saying, something wonderful about them. That's the idea. But then there's a word spins off of that called eponis. And that's the idea almost of an applause. That's almost the idea of a commendation. Have you ever been in a setting, some of you have been right here in church, where something's been such a blessing, you praise them. Whoa, amen. And that's a way of expressing it. I remember as a young preacher, boy, I was really straight, let me tell you. And boy, one day we had a blessed song ministered in church, and some of the kids who were attending our church, this was out in L.A., they started clapping. Well, man, being the righteous, fundamentalist preacher I was, I got up and I straightened those kids out right there. Bless them, 
church. We don't clap in church. This isn't a ball game. <laughs> One of our godly ladies came to me afterwards. She said, Pastor, you know the adults, they know to say amen. These children are just expressing that they're appreciating what ministry has gone on. I got up the next week, I looked at those kids. I said, I want to tell you kids something. Clap all you want to. And I'm clapping over sent. It's a way to express a praise to the Lord. And then there is the word eulogy. We go to a funeral, we hear a eulogy. You know, it's an amazing thing. No matter how, better, how much of a rascal you bury, <laughs> people still get up and say great things about you. Know? They're really a good guy. In fact, I was at one funeral where they got up and looked in the casket to make sure it was actually the person that they were talking to. <laughs> I'm kidding about that. But, uh, but the point is simply this, saying something good about it. But I'm going to go back to the Hebrew for one final word. It's called the rock. And it's a word of thanks, but it's also a transcendent word. And it comes like Psalm 34, 1, where I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. And it's really the idea, it is a transcendent privilege to praise God. Praise is a privilege. You see, in the coming uh, weeks of this, before this year is over, I have been given the honor of speaking at the retirement of a friend. A retirement dinner. I am honored that I get to honor him. And that's the idea. You see, it is a privilege that from these lips of clay, feeble as they are and representing a life that is frail, I can give praise to the God of heaven and earth. Praise God. Praise God. That's the idea. And I love what the Bible says in Psalm 100. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And the gates were the entrance to the outer area of the temple. And so people would kind of come in there and they still would be you know, just rejoicing. I know we're here to worship the Lord. I know walking out just across the parking lot this morning where I live before getting in the car to come to church. I was just rejoicing. I get to go to church today. Hey, man, I get to hear some good preaching today. Hey, oh, wait, I'm, I'm, I hope I do some good preaching today. But, but the point is simply this. I, I look forward to it. And you know what? You come into church and it's great to see everybody and so on. But you know, uh, where do we have the service? We have it right in here, don't we? And so all kinds of activities going on. But we gather in here. Some gather quietly. Others are glad. But when we get the service started, the focus is to be about God. We enter his courts with thanksgiving. We're so thankful. But when we really get close to him in the courts, it's like the focus is really on him. Let me suggest to you, out of Psalm 100, Simply how we can focus on praising God. Not so much for what he's done, but for who he is. A good study is what we call the attributes of God. And they are qualities of God. Some he has unto himself. Others he has shared with us. In the sense we have a sense of them in our own lives too. But I love Psalm 100. Let me just conclude with this. Number one, the psalmist said, let them you know, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Make a joyful noise in the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And then it says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. First of all, it's if we could call it this, his coronation, that he is the king. He is God. And that says basically, number one, we're recognizing that you are different and better and supreme compared to anybody else. Number two, you are God because there aren't any other gods. There may be false gods. There may be people that people have said are gods, but there's really only one God. And thirdly, no, he is God. That's why we praise him. Not only his coronation, but his creation. It goes on to say, he has made us and not we ourselves. You know, once in a while, uh, people, you know, will say to somebody, oh, you know, when they meet their kids, oh, it's your fault <laughs> that those kids are here, you know. And uh, But the idea is God made us. And, you know, that's honoring that God made us. Whatever evolution teaches, I'm thankful that creation teaches God himself brought me into being. Secondly, I love the fact 
that it humbles me. God made me. I'm honored and I'm humble. Number three, not only do we honor his coronation, he is God. Not only are his creation, he has made us, not we ourselves. We honor his care. It says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. You know, there's a southern term I use sometimes when I talk about going down to Texas, because I say, oh, my dad's people are down in Texas. What I'm talking about is the family, the relatives, the loved ones. Isn't it wonderful the Bible says we're his loved ones? We're his family. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You know what a good shepherd does? A good shepherd pays attention to his sheep. A good shepherd cares for his sheep. Psalm 23, he leads us beside the still waters. He restores our souls. He leads us in the, in the green pass. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's with us. And ultimately bring us into his home. He takes good care of his sheep. And if there's a sheep out there that hasn't been coming to the fold yet, he's out there seeking it. He'll leave the 99 in the fold to go reach the one that's not here. Amen. He's a good shepherd. He takes good care of us. And then it says also, we are his people, the sheep of his pastures. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. That's his character. You know, some people say God's good all the time. <laughs> Again, referring by dad, people say hey, God's good. He said, Well, he can't help you. <laughs> That's his nature. That's who he is. That's what he's like. You say, Well, you know what? I've had some bad stuff happen. So did Job. And the Bible says, after burying 10 kids, losing his wealth and losing his health, in the end of Job 1, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And it's the word Barak. It is a privilege because God is God. To praise him. Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel. You think they'd be getting great offerings. And everybody would say, boy, ain't they preaching, brother. No, they threw him in jail and beat him half to death. And the Bible says at midnight in the jail, beaten and in prison, and falsely accused, they are praying and singing praises to God. You know what? Our circumstances may change, but God does not. That's the idea. His character is good. And then finally, it says, and his steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. It's his consistency. You know what we're saying this morning? You can always count on God. Amen. You may not always be able to count on me. I may not always be able to count on you. But we can always count on God. Lamentations 3 declares his faithfulness. Great. And his mercies new every morning. I can go to God in prayer every day. Good things happening. Bad things happening. No, he's still on the throne. He's still good. He knows my need. He knows my heart. He knows I'm saved through Jesus Christ. And he knows that I'm his. And he's watching over. I'm going to suggest a spiritual practice. I tried it myself this morning, and I was blessed by it. I'm going to encourage you maybe to consider it this week. I took Psalm 100. I got down on my knees by my bed, and I just took those five things, his coronation, his creation, his character, his consistency, his care, and I just walked through it personally. I said, Lord, you are God. And thankfully, you are my God. Number two, you made me. I'm not just talking about all creation or Adam and Eve. I'm talking about you made me. Thirdly, you've taken such good care of me. And Lord, as many times as I've gotten out of the pasture, you kept bringing me back. Number four, you are good. Good because you're you're. And good because you're so giving. You're good and you're good to me. And I just listed off 
a few of the multitude of ways he's been good to me. And then finally, I said, in consistency, I've come to you for all these years, and you're always there, and you always will be. I've let you down many times. You never let me down. All I can tell you, brothers and sisters, when I got done with that, I had two words to say. Praise God. Would you say it with me? Praise God. Jamie, what's our song? 193.